Hi, my name is Robert Shorey. I'm a CEREC user, and um, this is one of my oldest CEREC units. It's a 2008 MCXL. Uh, been a great uh, workhorse, but uh, lately I've been having problems with my uh, spindle motors, and uh, we're going to find out if that's the cause of the issues with this unit. Uh, I've uh, bothered to take apart this and clean up this shaft, and uh, but we have to keep uh, pay attention to the orientation of uh, this plug. Um, I grease these with uh, a, a grease that's used for ga for uh, silicone uh, washers, and uh, so we're going to take you through this. Uh, I'm going to put this side back together, but then we got to go do this other side here, and I'll take you through that process. Um, there's quite a bit of cleaning that's going to be necessary through these uh, little torque screws. There's a lot of buildup that gets in here from all the debris from the ceramics. And uh, so you got to work on getting that stuff out of there and cleaned up so you don't strip these guys. And then uh, take these apart. And I'm in the process of putting a new spindle motor. I'll take you into where I'm putting one back together. And then we're going to go through the process of taking this apart. Now here's my workbench for uh, this. I, um, <clears throat> my old uh, spindle motors here. Um, and so I've taken that out of the unit. Um, one uh, thing you want to kind of keep this orientation of this plug here because this guy's going to fit down into here. If you look down in here, there's a little silicon washer down here. And this extra hole right here has to line up with that. And of course, this guy has to go back into place with those red wires and the gray wires and brown wires in the same orientation. Um, we're looking at it here. We see the same thing here as we lay these down. Um, and that's going to fit down into here. And then I'm going to take this and screw it back down here. Now, a lot of times I'll use Loctite on these screws. Um, other things to keep in mind, there's a washer here. And I had to go in and add some new adhesive material to this to um, seal it up well. Uh, with this off, I had the opportunity to clean up all the ceram. Uh, uh, the ceramic dust debris that uh, adheres around here, clean that off, clean this guy off. And the thing that I like to use for that is a screen that's called a, um, um, uh, he's for cleaning uh, wash basins and toilets and that's a pumice screen. And um, it is abrasive, so uh, handle with care, but it does get a lot of that junk off of these uh, guys. I'll probably unscrew this guy also and clean this up a little bit more too before I put it together. I want this guy to be pretty clean uh, when we put it back. Take you through this assembly process a little bit. Um, this motor um, pulls out of here like this and remember that there's a little silicon gasket down here and you want to line up this hole on this guy with that and then the screws are going to go in there and these little screws I'm going to use uh, you could use Loctite but I'm going to use a little bit of handy dandy at uh, polysilicon adhesive material just kind of dab it on the ends of here when I screw this in to help uh, lock it so they don't unscrew so we're going to reassemble this guy and put a little bit of adhesive there as well and put it together and then we're going to put it back on the machine okay this guy here was uh, reassembled um, the, th the three screws in the front here, all right? And then I also removed this little space holder. I think this is for when uh, these guys have a sensor on top of here, and it's just a space holder. But I wanted to clean off all the debris around it, so I took that off. The main thing about these torque screws, a lot of the debris builds up in there, so you have to chip away at it using small dental instruments to get it out of there. And, and then what I generally do is once I've got it out, I set it over the area, and I might tap it with my hammer a little bit just to continue to break up some of the debris that's fit in there and make sure that we're getting a snug fit. Now I'm not talking about really hitting that hard, it's just um, tapping it to re release some of the debris and the same thing here. Now the important thing is what are these guys? Are they a torque six or seven? And I'm not sure because all this debris builds up and what I found is I had to um, set this on a, on a surface and uh, take like a torque, uh, a torque uh, seven and tap it again light force not real heavy force until it was snug here because the six seemed too sloppy all right but i think these are probably a torque six but as these have been taken in and out and debris gets in here i had to do something to make sure they fit tight so it doesn't strip out and so i just lightly tap till it's firm and then i use my instruments to unscrew it safely without uh, messing up that head 
Um, also, a lot of debris builds up in here. So a handy instrument is a Weedle Stat chisel, a number 10. This number 10 uh, works. Uh, it's a nice size in several areas on this unit to get debris out of there. Uh, some other areas is around these areas here to get that stuff uh, chipped out of there and cleaned out. Uh, took this little rubber guy out. And the important, I, I used some uh, silicone grease um, that's used for rubber gaskets and things to fit these back into place so they don't get all cracked and brittle. Uh, and now we're gonna reassemble this guy and put him back on the machine. All right, so it's a process. Um, I believe this guy's gonna fit this way, yep. And we're gonna uh, clean up around here and seal that a little bit, and then we'll screw this guy back together. All right, so that'll be the process that we're going through here to replace this spindle motor in this unit. All right, with the reassembly of the spindle motor and so forth, the things to keep in mind, when you look down inside of here, there's two ports, and you see a long one and a short one. And so, of course, the long one has to line up with the one that's a little more towards the center there, and then the shorter one's there. And then you also have to plug this unit in to this port over here, right there, uh, with the red part facing the motor here itself, and get that together with the back plate on there. And so we're going to do that, and then we'll show you what that looks like after the fact. Uh, things to keep in mind, there's these sets of screws, these two long screws will go through the main body of this, and then these other two screws will fasten this to this end of this um, uh, spindle here, right here, okay? So um, this is a part of reassembly of the unit, and then we're gonna go over and work on this other one. One of the things I found is that uh, if you use this little flat area to hold this um, down, and then you can connect the electrical connection here, and then you can start bringing the two together and line it up with the ports here, and then screw this down, okay? So there's just a little bit of a, a marriage of these guys that has to happen to make it all go back together. And you can see now we just push this together. Now we're going to start screwing it in. And um, when you screw it in, it'll back up tight against this uh, washer right here. And then this part should be done. We'll go over to the other one. All right. Well, we're going to be changing a spindle motor on this MCXL. This is an older MCXL. That's a 2008. Still has the auto chuck. I love that. Uh, and it's a single motor, and we're going to be changing this motor over here. We already did this one, and so just some comments. Um, right in here, there's um, four sets of screws, two of which hold this to the shaft and two of which hold the body together. These two here hold the body together. They're long screws. Um, they look about like that. And then these other two are short screws, and they're going to look like this. Now, you'll start off with a Torx, uh, probably about a Torx, uh, eight or nine, uh, and you want to work out the debris that gets stuck into these uh, screw heads. And sometimes I'll use a hammer to kind of tap the driver into the uh, into the port just a little bit. Um, I can't illustrate that because I'm holding the camera with one hand. But if you place the torque driver there and then just lightly tap on it, that'll help remove some of the debris. And make sure that it engages tightly before you start trying to undo these guys, and also clear out any debris around the periphery of it. So you'll have to remove those screws, and when you do that, uh, it'll end up looking like this. Okay, these guys are removed. Now on this side, I ran into some trouble, so I'll speak to that. I'll call it sidetracked. So three of the screws, uh, we cleaned out the debris, we unscrewed it, it came out great, and get to the last screw. Of course, it's always the last screw. I tried to get it to engage, it, it wouldn't go, and, it, and so the driver was too small, so that I moved up from the... A T9 to a T10 still wouldn't go. Then I had to cut a T10 down. So here's what happens sometimes. As you're trying to make sure these engage tight, you'll usually start off, here's what a typical T10 looks like, all right? But you notice it gets fatter as you get closer to the shank. So sometimes um, if it's not engaging properly, stop, don't strip it. Um, cut your torques down a little bit and keep tapping it in. Make sure it engages tightly. And, and then sometimes that'll get you there. But in this case, I went all the way down to quite a bit off of this Torx driver and it still kept stripping and not engaging. So now you're frustrated. Get the dental drill out and I cut a slot into the screw head. So now that Torx screw head looks like that. 
all right, instead of like that. Now, I think this is what's called a M2 um, Torx uh, screw head. It's a uh, like a T10 or T9, um, but and it's um, 30 millimeters long. So I'm gonna see if I can rebuy that. But in the meantime, I'll, I'll probably just use this um, one that I converted to a flathead. But that's the trouble sometimes of changing these things. Now, once you get those screws out, there's four of them, um, then this head's going to be able to come apart from this segment. And I've cleaned out in this area here uh, with a number um, 10 chisel, just a little bit. Now, there's a gasket in here, so don't get too carried away and don't uh, gouge up that gasket and ruin it. But basically, on both sides, you see there's another one here. And another one here. And this is where you can take a flathead screwdriver and you can start to just gradually move these guys apart and work your way around and bring this off. Now this uh, has a motor in it that plugs in. The plug in uh, looks like this this guy here. All right. And so and, it, and it's indicated with a red on how to orient it. Um, but we're going to pull that out and then there's three screws here that we're going to undo. Now one thing, uh, just a tip that I'll tell you is all this debris tends to cake in here. So I took, uh, after I fixed this guy, I took some ortho wax and I mushed the ortho wax into these screw heads. I don't want all that uh, ceramic debris getting in there again. If I ever have to take this thing apart, that was really a pain to get all that ceramic out of there. All right, so use a little ortho wax, smudge it in here. I can't imagine that there's any negative effect to that. Uh, you have filters, if it ever got dislodged, it's not gonna go into your uh, water system. But put the, that there and smudge it and, and make it uh, fit. And I think that way, if you ever have to get in there, you just get the wax out of there. Now, just some comments to, about these different systems. This one here is a 2008 single motor. You gotta take the housing apart. If you have a newer, um, MCXL. The good news is um, like 2013 and up, you don't have to take the whole thing apart like I'm doing. You just get to these three screws here and you can bring this motor out and you can do the same thing on the opposite side. So changing spindle motors in the newer model is an easier process. Here's an older uh, in-lab MCXL. You see it has an outer housing and it's even more complicated. You got to get this scanner off of here and then you have to get into this and remove this just like we're doing on the other one. Uh, if you have an MCX, uh, it's pretty much modeled after the MCXL. Uh, it's still got that area where you can engage, but it doesn't have all the little things on top that the other one has, a little rubber grommet here and a little uh, attachment where you could hook a sensor up. So they dumbed it down a little bit, uh, but it's really the same unit. Now before we start reassembling, uh, we wanna make sure everything's working. And so one uh, way you can do that is you can plug the new motor in that you got in, make sure that these two red sides are facing each other. But you can plug it in and you can actually let it dangle here. And as long as the only test that you run is the DC speed motor test, don't run the other tests where it's gonna start doing a lot of things with these arms. Um, when you turn it on, this is gonna move, of course, but it won't affect this. You can run the DC motor speed test, make sure that that's operating properly, and then you can uh, start putting things back together. So at this point in time, we're gonna turn this off. I gotta close the door, of course, it's reminding me. Off. You can see this is moving around. That doesn't much matter. But we wanted to test make sure that motor is working before we go through the trouble of putting everything back together. All right, once you've put the new motor in and fastened it here, we're using some Loctite. Um, fasten it tight <clears throat> into this housing. Then you'll start to line these guys back up. The trick here is getting this connection, and I use a pair of hemostats. Remember that the red part, uh, it'll be marked with red, faces the motor, okay, when you clip these back together. And I'm gonna take these hemostats away, and then we're gonna start to, we've got that fastened in there tightly, we're gonna start to slide this in here. Now, um, what you can do too, is you can put a little bit of uh, rubber uh, glue or uh, a perma gasket around here, just to create a little better seal in this area here before you join these two things together. Make sure that the out here is very clean, okay? All right, it's very important that uh, after you finish uh, installation of the new spindle motors that you run through a calibration sequence. And so that's what we're going to be doing here with this MCXLs. We're going to be checking the calibration. There's might be minor changes uh, in taking that motor, just, you know, probably tenths of millimeters, but uh, just want to make sure that it's all accurate when it's milling out the, that crown. 
So run through your calibration program. It's built into your unit. And uh, that's it. We finished the uh, installation of the spindle motor.